Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today I've got the carbon fiber tube. Let's make those control rods. For all you guys watching this video, once again, you've seen my conundrum from the last video. I did go ahead and I did purchase the carbon fiber uh, rod and it took about a week to get here. That wasn't that big of a deal. And then I was trying to decide if I wanted to go uh, for the 440 rod, if I wanted to go ahead and get some more of the stainless steel from McMaster Car. Uh, I opted for running over to Dubro products. D Dubro had the same thing in stainless steel. It was cheaper than McMaster Car. And because they're about a mile and a half from where I work, that's the place I normally go. What I decided to do, and yes, there is a method to my madness, even less expensive was to get their 12 inch rod with the 440 end on it. Now, when I was talking to the, to, the, to the lady over at Dubro, she went and asked one of the guys in the back room if it was made out of stainless steel as well. And I don't think it is, but for $5.50 for six of these versus $2.45 a piece for those, I, I opted for the, for the cheaper version. Now, I'm gonna bring you in the back to show you. I've got everything set up, ready to start drilling holes and ready to start epoxying things together because yes, I do a lot of work, so you guys don't have to watch it. What I'm gonna do with these rods is I'm gonna come on in, I wish I had another full one here in front of me. I'm gonna come in and with my little teeny grinder, with a little cutoff wheel, I'll put a cutoff wheel not on this, I'll just do little Dremel ones. But what I'll do is I'll come on in and just cut a couple little slots in these, not all the way through, just enough so when they get epoxy down inside these tubes, it's going to hold it tight. Now what I'm going to do on the outside of the tube as well, is I'll probably do the same thing. I may just come in with a very small drill bit and just one of my little wire size, just drill a hole through, half on one side, half on the other side a little ways up. So when I push this piece down inside, there will be probably just a little piece of tissue wedged down in there at the bottom of how far it's gonna slide in. And then from there, once I put the epoxy in there and push it all out, it's gonna push out the little holes on the side. So it's gonna lock these whole things in and there should never be a problem with these things coming out. So let me go ahead and take you guys off the stand and I'll bring you out there and I'll show you where we're at. Let me show you to the best of my ability what I've had to do and why I'm doing it this way. So as we look down inside the fuselage, you can see I've got all of these servos lined up where I want them to. I came in, I made a little teeny mark, you probably can't see it right there, right there. That's halfway across. Those two servo horns won't be touching each other. When I screw them in, they're gonna be, they're gonna be just barely missing each other. I wanna have probably a sixteenth of an inch or smaller gap between the two. Um, we'll probably shoot more for the sixteenth of an inch because what that's going to do, that's going to give me the right angle coming out of back here because once again, these are carbon fiber tubes. They're not going to flex. So those will be set up. This one over here is, uh, this is going to be the rudder and that has to be at a different angle. So of course I move that to the outside because that has to come out straighter than the elevators. Yes, there's still always a method behind my madness. So I'm not worried about the throttle servo yet. That'll be coming up later. My goal today is to get these things all set up and attached and tested so you can see them. Now, as you can see, I've just got everything set up to drill the holes. These are gonna have to get removed. The elevators, because I can't get the Dremel down inside there and drill that. And this is just gonna get drilled straight through and I could use the Dremel uh, on those just from where they're sitting on the rudder so the rudder can stay on. So those will come off shortly, get drilled out, and then I'm gonna run the screws through and attach them. And then once the screws are in these things, everything's held together, I'll be heading up to the front and I will be attaching the servos. The, the throttle servo I'll probably leave in the position it's at now, but it's not gonna screw that one into position because that can wait. 
And then as soon as these are all screwed into position, that's how we're gonna find out the length that these rods, because right now you only see a little bit sticking out. These rods go from here all the way on up to here. They're a foot long. So I'm gonna be making a mark and see how far back I wanna slide these things when I cut them. So I'll bring you guys back in when I'm doing that as well. So let me go ahead, get these things drilled, screwed into position, and then I'll bring you on out when I have these things hooked up and I'll show you where we're going next. Yes, I forgot all about you guys. I thought I had the camera running. This little one down here, right there. There's camera number one. Your camera number two. There's camera number three. Yeah, I had the most important one not on. This one. That's where all the audio comes from. Anyway, here's where I'm at. This is going to be the very last control rod. And I wanted to get this part in on the last one because the first one, I made changes on the second one and the third one, I following what I did in the second one because I kind of went a little bit overkill, so to speak, on the first one. Uh, it was not necessary. So what I'm doing here right now, as you can see, hopefully you can see, I've got some little grooves cut in there. And all I'm doing is coming in with a really beat up cutoff wheel. It's, needs to be replaced. And all I'm doing is I'm just coming in and let me do this so I'm not gonna hit myself in the face with shrapnel because I've got no safety gear on. All I do is I come on in, do a quick little, just buzz it once. And all that's done is just put some more little grooves in there. And like I said earlier, there's no torsion in this. This is just push and pull. So I'm not really concerned about this because this, once it's down inside, everything is set up with the epoxy down inside the tube. It's not going to go anywhere. And if you don't like the way I'm doing this, don't do it that way. Just go ahead and, and you're going to have to think about it the way that you're going to want it done to make sure that nothing is going to fail in it or minimizing the chance of failing. I've done this many times in the past and I haven't had a failure yet. So this is why I do it this way. But like I said, if you're unsure about this, don't do it this way. And then the way I'm drilling, just two holes. They're just coming in on this side, 180 degrees up here on this side. That way, once the epoxy comes in, it gets pushed out through the little holes I'm drilling and that's gonna lock everything in place. If you care to do it this way, do it this way. You can put more holes in here if you wish. Um, I've been doing, I did three on the first one, uh, and then I went ahead and did two on every other one of them, and I pulled on it when everything was, when, when the epoxy was hard inside there, and I couldn't get it to pull out. So that's why I had to do a test piece. So the way I'm gonna start this off just by showing you, and this is gonna be the wrong way for me to do it, uh, I'm gonna drill this out down on the bench, and that's why I got the other camera rolling. What I do is I come on in first, fire it up, and just, I just want to put a little teeny flat spot on that side. And a little one right there. And what that's going to do, that's going to keep this drill bit from wandering around because it is a five millimeter outside diameter. So this little drill bit wants to wander all over the place. And now it is time to drill. It's not flat enough. There it is. And hopefully you can see the little teeny holes. They're not that big, just a little teeny wire size drill bit. The top, and hopefully you can see it. There's the bottom, right about there. So then what I'm gonna do is come on in and I'm gonna mix up a little more epoxy. Yeah, I should 
should be good enough. Now what I did with this is I made a little teeny pointy tip on one of my little pieces that I cut off. This is how I'm going to get the epoxy down on the inside. Now before I get the epoxy down, I, I just kind of wad it up into a little ball, roll it around a little bit so it's got a point on it. Then I'm going to come on in, and because this is two inches down, what I like to do, and I'll use this, is the piece we're going to stick in there because I do have a marker where I need to end that at. So it's going to come on in, I'll very gently, if it wants to agree with me, push this down inside until it gets right to that point. So now I've got a little piece of paper, tissue paper, wadded up right down here. That's going to keep any epoxy from wanting to continue to flow down. And this is where I begin with the epoxy. Just kind of start dabbling it up on the top. Push it down inside and continue doing that, of course, because it's five minute epoxy. you got a limited amount of time to work with it. You can see I'm probably going to have to mix up just a little bit more, but we'll find out shortly. Okay, as you can see, it's already starting to push through that first little dot at the top. Let's get a little more down the side. And you can see now it's coming out on the bottom as well. So this side here is done. Now, I need to put a little bit of a smear on that rod. So, mix up a little bit more. Alright, now that I've got this on here, I've got more, way more than I need on there. So I'm going to push this all the way down inside till I get close to that little black line. Let's wipe off the epoxy to about that point right there. And then we're wiping this off and then I want to make sure that that little black line is out and that little black line is out right there. Hopefully you can see it without it sliding in right there. I'm going to go lay this down out on the other side and let it set up. All right, this is one of the ones that's all finished. I haven't sanded these little pieces down yet. I'm going to sand them down. I'll put a little bit of uh, thick CA filler inside there. Um, just to make sure that it's nice and smooth, but this piece is one that was glued in a couple days ago and that's rock solid and this one here Was just put in probably oh, I don't know maybe about 20 minutes ago and this one's rock solid now too You can pull on it. It's not budging a bit So this one's ready to go as well All right, everyone it is done. We got up we got down We got left and we got right so the tail is done all the control rods taken care of 
I have to do a little bit of stuff inside the fuselage and that's going to be to set up braces. Okay, now for the control rod bracing, I've got options. I think it's 3 8 the uprights, because it's going to go between the uprights. And I kind of showed you a couple times where it's going to go. And of course, I'll probably change my mind. But what I decided to do, instead of going with planking where I'm drilling holes through it, I'm just going to take a piece. And this is this is a little bit thick. It'll be ripped. Uh, so say that it's, it's let's just call it 3 8 by 3 8 square, because that's what I think we're going to be using on there. Um, I'll be able to glue this in between the uprights and then on top of that So we'll be having the rod sit on top of this and then we'll have another piece come down That's gonna pretty much just about touch the top just so we even though it's not sandwiched All we're trying to do is we're not trying to put friction on it We're just trying to hold it just to have the minimum amount of flex as this going through so then what we'll do is we'll have two pieces up and down like this that the rod's gonna come through then I'll just put a couple uprights here now all I got to do is just make it just so that we're just holding the carbon fiber tubing in line so that way it's not gonna be flexing back and forth and I think we're only gonna need two spots so that with the ailerons uh, that'll be part of the next video what I plan on using for the ailerons because I do have six more of these rods already set up the for 440 I can go with 256 if I want because I've got some of that stuff here um, but chances are I'll probably just go with 440 um, so I'll just go ahead and solder some ends on this side or just use my little teeny uh, my Z bender and just put the little you know little Z bend through it uh, regardless either way this is what I'm going to use for that because I don't really have to use uh, carbon fiber it's not that long the pieces are maybe maybe six eight inches long um, and for those little ailerons, they're not that big and it's not going to take that much to go ahead and move them up and down So that's going to be my plans for that too. So on that video, it'll be the cross uh, bracing uh, for the controls going to the tail and Then the ailerons now with the ailerons. I have to make the servo mounts too. So that'll be part of the next video So the way things are sitting, let's just go ahead and call this a video and I'll see you guys next time. I'm back down in the shop mm -hmm.